I can't, I can't even stick around. We're customizing a Florida Gators themed AL 37. And it is, guys, just exactly as I said it is. So I've done a lot of custom AL-37s now for people. My next one is going to be a Florida Gators-themed AL-37. So this is a free-wing AL-37. And let me show you guys. This was picked up from Motion RC. So let me show you what we are going to be doing. Um, short and brief. Got a lot of alligators laying around here. I wonder what I'm going to do with them. Anyway, um, Check this out. So I got perfect match paint. Now this is from myperfectcolor.com. Not only did I get the orange and the blue to match exactly for this plane, but uh, when you batch it, you might as well get yourself the touch up paint as well because they don't charge you the batching fees. But we're uh, gonna keep this short and simple. I don't need to tell you how I build it. I got so many AL37 builds. If you want to, you can look up there for them. Anyway, we're just gonna time lapse this baby and get her done. Right, guys here again uh, i don't want to get real in depth with this with tips and tricks i've covered it in so many other airliner videos but i guess in case you've never seen them we'll try and remember to put the links up above but we use flexible spackle simply use a hotel key card to lightly fill things in but what we've done here is try and remove and you can see just a hair of a seam right there but that's what that looks like all the way across so we try and remove all that stuff especially on the top to give the airliner a really really nice finish um, but that flexible spackle will fill in that crease and then what we are going to do uh, if you try and paint over that the paint's going to just soak into this spackle and it's going to give it a dull finish compared to everything else so um, what we have to do now is, is polycrylic the whole thing, primer it, resand it, and then we are going to uh, paint it at that point. But it's time to start taping things off. But I'm really happy with all those seams there on the top and all the way through we did uh, for this guy for his project, the bottom as well. And one of the other things I did is I've tried to sand out and remove the best I can all of those you can see those little um, sunflower shaped vent marks from the mold. I just think the plane looks a little cleaner if we can cover those up a good bit. So you can't remove them completely, but uh, we don't want them to really pop through the paint. And you do want to make sure you do not sand off your alignment window marks because then your windows are going to wind up going like this down the fuse. So uh, after we sand down all that spackle, we use a shop vac with a nice soft brush like this one to vacuum off all the dust. And now we're going to work at taping things off. And if you guys have not seen my baby powder trick that I came up with, it is, it is blown up the internet and the way that we look at finishing models, especially foam models, because this trick will allow you to tape off wherever you want. And when you pull the tape, it's not going to pull off any of the underlying paint. And all you do is you just take some of this baby powder here. And like I lay my tape on the inside here because I'm going to cover up all these pockets. And all you want to simply do, so that way I'm not pulling up that underlying paint here for an example, is you just take this rag and you just take some of that baby powder and you rub it all over the surface. And no, it doesn't change the way the finish looks. It actually seems to help make cleaner lines because it fills in some of the imperfections. But whatever is on there, and I mean, you're not leaving coats of this stuff all over the place, but basically um, it's filling in any of them imperfections, but it's giving the tape the baby powder to stick to and it seals it off perfectly. And when you go and lift, it will not peel it. 
and uh, I've done a the last Jurassic Park AL video so if you want to cut back into that one you can see it but the trick works phenomenally and uh, it's going to work really well on this one have a really cool design in mind for this guy so let's go ahead and get uh, into taping off all of our lights and our pockets so we could polycrylic primer and uh, starts throwing some paint on this thing and we are going to be using gray for the stabs and the wings so um, you know we do have to try and sand off some of those little vents right there on those as well but um, otherwise we got the lights done somebody else had come up with this mod I did not but the way I do mine is slightly different and we've removed the servos I'll remove those balls as well because I really want a nice clean paint job all the way around this thing but I'm super excited to start throwing some some paint and color to this thing uh, let's get to it sometimes up to two coats of this stuff this will help to fill in all the little foam dot imperfections in there that the polycrylic hasn't already filled and then we'll let this dry sand probably fill again and sand so a total of two times guys now it's time to start sanding down the fuselage with that filler primer it fills in a lot of the uh, little foam dots now you could put 12 coats of this stuff on if you want and actually make it look like a perfect composite plane but what I notice is as soon as it still gets hot out in the sun it still tends to bring those out so I'm not going to get super wrapped up in that but I like a nice surface for all the paint to adhere to so I'm going to use a sanding block so we don't create this in there and you don't want to scrub so hard to get the foam hot because then you're still going to cause it to gator and the other thing we're going to watch out for is our window markings we don't want to sand those off but you'll notice the primer leaves like a little bit of roughness to it and as we go over that stuff you could see how much it changes color and you actually know everywhere that you've sanded so that's what we're looking to do is just take a nice uh light sanding to the whole thing here we go All right, guys now you can see the uh i hope you could see that that it shows up in the camera anyway so this turned out uh nice and smooth it's all sanded down 
We'll put this one uh, away, wipe it down with some alcohol. Again, we use 400 grit sandpaper, um, and I'll show you what the roughed up one looks like that's not sanded. Here's our roughed up uh, fuselage that's not sanded yet. So you can see it's got a lot of the fuzzies and roughness to it. There's more of the undulations that you can see because the primer lays on those. So as you sand it down, it kind of fills in, takes off those ledges and actually makes it look smoother. So let's get the sanding. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and wipe down the whole plane with uh, isopropyl alcohol just to get off all of that uh, dust and debris. All right, what do you guys say we get some orange on this thing? So we're gonna be painting the design. The whole front half is going to be orange. Again, we're using uh, paint by myperfectcolor.com. This is uh, Gator Orange, but the whole front of the fuselage is gonna be orange. And then up to the vertical stab in the back is gonna be orange. So we're gonna paint up most of that. We'll give it about an hour or two before we do another coat. And we throw on the old respirator as always. these covers on uh, the stabs or wings or whatever else. I take them off, simply use some sticky tape on the back to hold them there. But this way you can paint the covers all the way around so you don't see any of the white edges. But also the nice part is here is that the screws are removed so you're not painting over the screws. Now we're going to go ahead and do the clear on the horizontal stabs um, before we apply the trim tape or the leading edge aluminum tape, I should say. for some of that blue stuff to dry here's where the baby powder trick again comes in really really handy again we just have baby powder in there we put it on here and anywhere I'm gonna tape or I think I'm gonna tape rub it just get that stuff all all over the place in there you can't you can't get too much you really can't
All right, what we're gonna do now, guys, is peel that tape off, and you're gonna see the, the baby powder trick at its best here. And you're gonna see the nice clean lines we get. So just find the edge and peel up and away from the painted surface. You can see that we have no peeled paint. And we got a little bit of a bleed through right there around those little dots, but that's not a big deal. You can clean that up fairly easily. And let's go ahead and start peeling this stuff off as well. And you'll be able to see here the same thing. Nice clean paint lines. Try not to get paint all over my fingers. because you can still transfer it onto the white underneath. But again, we're not peeling up. We're not peeling up paint. So you can see a couple little spots where I got some bleed through and I'm just gonna have to do some touch up, but that's just really because of the way the tape laid around uh, some of them vents. But otherwise, that's really good. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the first coat in the inside of the nacelles. I like to paint these silver, and then after silver, then we'll streak it with some brown and black, but silver first. So I hope you guys can see on the inside of there. And that's the finished look that we get by adding the burnt sienna with black after the aluminum is dried in there. I love it. All right, guys, here we go. The most important part and the nicest touch to the engine deal is putting in our swirls. So I am just using a Sharpie white paint pen and we are going to start right here. And just curl our way out like that. Let's get to the other side. And this one we have to do the opposite direction. There. There we go. Engine swirls are in. So anyway, it's time to redo the swirls. Looks like a crackhead did the last one. So we're using the white Sharpie here. And uh, to remove the old ones, we just did the universal enamel thinner. So I want to go counterclockwise with these. So let's just see if we can keep it Keep it simple. And I think that will work just fine. So that gives you uh, the ability to still see them. Now we're gonna finish uh, painting out the back of the second engine. Get a little bit of black here, let's get a tin. All right, there we go. Love it, love it, love it. Now I'm just gonna take a file and chamfer off the edges of the carbon like this, just to make it easier for things to slide together. It doesn't take a lot, just a little bit to take that edge off.
All right, let's go ahead and put our horizontal stabs back together again. Now it's time to make our trim pieces. So we're gonna take aluminum HVAC tape. This one actually has a pretty substantial wrinkle right there. So we're gonna cut that out because I don't wanna use that. And we use a rolling cutter. You don't wanna use just a regular exacto because then it'll drag and cut um, so we need a piece that is 14 inches long and the way that i do this is i will take my ruler here we'll lay out 14 inches and i will actually use a regular exacto just to make A cut there so that way I know where it is we can lay this back here to make sure that we're square like that so there I have my 14 inch piece now I need two pieces one for each stabilizer that is uh, one one inch tapered by three quarters so if you want to you can take your you can take your one inch and we'll mark one inch right there so i know that's where that is and then over here So we came off the left side. So over here, I'm gonna come off the right side. And I made that line. And what I actually do is I fold that edge up. I fold that edge up and now I can lay my straight rule right against those edges and then you take your this is a circular fabric cutter Amazon or Walmart that works great so now I have a piece that is one inch wide this one I can save uh, later for the winglets and now we're one inch at one end and three quarters at the other end, but you can't just measure three quarters and cut it because then you'll have one straight and one tapered. We want them both to come in. So that means we have to take a, a quarter inch off of each side. So basically we're going to um, subtract one eighth of an inch off of each end. So from here, we go ahead and I'm gonna mark one eighth and from this side I mark one eighth cut that cut that and now what you do is again I can roll that up against that edge and I have to taper this all the way out to my edge there. It's 
stay up against the edge of your ruler. That one's cut. That one's cut. And now we have a nice tapered aluminum edge for our stabilizer. So let's get that on. All right, let's go ahead and get this installed on one of the stabilizers. Now, you can go ahead and cheat here a little bit. This is water, um, two drops of Dawn dish soap, and like two drops of rubbing alcohol. And what I'm going to do here is, if you noticed, I put a small Sharpie dot for center and a small Sharpie dot for center. And that's going to help you when you look at the way that this is seamed. It'll help you to cheat if you want to make sure that you're lined up. So that way you're not getting uh, off kilter. And these things, this tape, guys, is just completely unforgiving. If you get this stuck on there um, or you put it on the wrong way or whatever, we want the wider edge up towards the top uh, coming down to here. It, you go to peel it up, it's peeling the paint off. I'll guarantee it. So with that being said... Um, I like to use just a little bit of this mixture here. We'll spray it down. Make that good and wet. And then we'll peel this and install it. And that way it gives us a little bit of um, extra ability to work. And one of the other things is I don't like to install it all at once. Let's just work at getting one edge done. And now that that edge is there, we can come all the way down. And you want to give this thing a uh, careful it don't touch in the center and it doesn't grip itself. This is where those dots really, really come in handy to make sure that you stay center. And then from there, we'll work that seam down there and i always like to work the top over first so that way i can see here what we're doing um you can get away with a wrinkle or two on the bottom but the the top part we really want to try and just keep working All right, guys, and there you have it. All right, guys, now this project would not be possible had it not been for Cali Graphics. You can find Cali at www.calie-graphics.com. This is my fifth project with Cali, and again, phenomenal work. So um, whenever you order graphics from her, I'd like to tell people they go to her website and they say, well, I didn't see what I wanted. She doesn't have to offer. She will custom make anything. You just have to give her as many pictures as you can of the supporting airplane or graphics. And she finds a way to put the magic in it and make this stuff happen. You email her all of that information. She will go through, send you back uh, copies. She is very busy. But uh, she does respond, and it just takes a little bit of time to work through. Um, she's good at what she does, so give it a little bit. It's well worth it. When the graphics arrive, they arrive in a triangle-shaped tube, and they are rolled up. So let me show you what I like to do with mine the second they arrive. So whenever you get your graphics, they may be kind of hard to work with if you leave them rolled up. So here's my trick. Don't tell the wife we hide stuff under the table. So as if you look underneath the mat... Ah, there's all my graphics. So all this weight helps to smush them out as soon as I get them. So as always, the tips um, to tricks to applying these, we're going to apply the football laces to the inside so the passengers, if there was any, could see it um, all the way through the inside of these winglets. Cut out as close as you can in a generic shape uh, the piece that you want. 
I use a spray bottle that's full of water, two drops of Dawn dish soap, and about two small squirts of any type of rubbing alcohol. We're going to mist this thing down good, and that gives us the ability to apply our graphics. Then I seal it with the Minwax Polycrylic, and then once the polycrylic is dried, then we will install the leading edge. If you want to poly over these, you can, but what I noticed is it doesn't um, retain that really bright aluminum shine. It kind of takes some of that away, so I like to do it after the fact. But anyway, um, we're gonna go ahead and get out to cutting these. Now again, as I always say, don't get this stuff wet. If you get this wet, it's gonna stick to the decals. Take it, set it off to the side, let it dry, and hopefully at that point they will come off. But that's why I say trim this, put the rest off to the side, Take this piece, spray here, good liberal amount, then apply what you want. So I never do like the way that they do this with this rod in the top and that seam open. So we're going to fill that in with our good old friend here, Mr. Flexible Spackle. And then um, we're going to sand off all the dots in here and uh, reseal this with Minwax so we get a nice finish to it and then repaint. But we're also going to be stripping out gear and uh, servos because I don't want to paint over any of that stuff. So uh, away we go. Well, we got our engine cells painted, or wrapped up so we can paint them. That's going to be gray. And also we got done sanding this piece. And again, guys, we have to clear that with Minwax. Otherwise, the gray sucks in and changes the you know, the sheen on it. So that'll get coated, couple coats of Minwax, and then we're gonna paint these babies. <laughs> check this thing out look so we got her up on the bench got the nose all painted up we got her just clamped together now i i normally would seal this seam up but i can't because i gotta unbox or unbuild this thing and box it up to send it to the gentleman that i'm building this for but that's kind of a rough idea of what she's gonna look like guys look at how sweet that is absolutely love it now this is what this whole project is all about. It is time to sticker this baby up. Let me show you what we're working with. The graphics are custom made by calligraphics.com. Link in the description below. It doesn't matter if you're building a military jet, this airliner, something custom. You guys want some decal art for your plane you guys got to go over and check out Callie she is the go-to source for this stuff whether it's the Toy Story airliner whether it was the Jurassic Park airliner, whether it's going to be this Florida Gators airliner, or I have another one coming up for you. That one's gonna be cool that I'm building for another gentleman. So with that being said, you order 
any graphics you want from Kali, you just send her some pictures via email and say, this is what I want for this plane. The more pictures, the better. Give her some time. She's super swamped and busy. She's going to email you back some proofs of what they would look like, give you your costs, get your approval, and then you're going to get sent this stuff as soon as she can get to it when you're in that list. So again, be patient. She's super busy for a reason. Like I said, she is the go-to source. So Cali Graphics will send you all your graphics in big sheets, all right? All wrapped up in these rolls in this triangle cardboard box. First thing I do with all this stuff is I throw it under the kitchen table as I, as, as I explained to you guys earlier, and then that will flatten everything out. I let it sit in there as soon as I start this project. This stuff is being smushed, and now it's so much easier to work with because everything is flat. And you can see right there, nothing's curled up and it's easy to work with. So we have tail art right there. We have our, let me show you, the gators coming down the backside, guys. How cool is that going to be? I don't think there's going to be any misconception about uh, whose airliner this is. But we also have the big gators for the front. Look at that thing. You want to talk about show pieces, guys? Here it is. I mean, this thing is going to be cool. And then we have, if I can find it, the old Florida is going to go right here on the inside of uh, that canopy. So right between the wing and so forth. And then obviously we lay on the windows and everything else as we go. So again, link Cali graphics down in the description below. That's what makes this airplane an airplane or makes this airliner go, wah! Cali got it going on, baby. All right, let's get the uh, first concoction of Cali graphics on there. So what I like to do is use some tape. And I know I said I was just going to do this in a very quick time lapse, the whole thing, but I like explaining stuff. So anyway, I'm going to find the little foamy markers they give you. There and there. All right, and now I use those for guidance for the doors. We're gonna cut the doors out and I try and cut fairly close to the, um, the decal. So that way I don't have a lot to deal with. Move this out of the way so when you spray it, you do not want the back of this paper getting wet because then misery occurs. I learned that the hard way a long time ago. So, and just to keep on pace, again, Cali Graphics, you can check her out over at www.calligraphics.com. And um, for what it's worth, keep in mind, just because you don't see it on her website doesn't mean that she won't do it. She does tons of custom, custom work. And uh, basically what it comes down to is you just got to get her pictures of what you want. She's not going to list a gazillion different schemes that people have come up with. So um, www.calliegraphics.com. All right, and what I'll do is I'll post this thing right at the bottom, put that decal on there, and then so we're going to go ahead and just give this thing a... And this is my concoction of warm water, two drops of Dawn dish soap, and about two or three drops of rubbing alcohol. And I'm just careful because there's multiple pieces here, and I want them all to stay on the transfer. I don't want to peel them up and get the spacing wonky. So just take your time coming off the transfer. And like I said, don't get this thing on the back. Don't get this thing on the back, the backer here. Do not get that wet. 
once you throw this out, you're good. Now this piece, I like to just give it a nice little light misting. And from here, now we can get the work. And if you have to move things, that's the benefit of having the water. So I think right there looks good. What I'll do is so ever gently pull that off there. Get this one off there. I like to start at the center and kind of squeegee my way out. As I get the bigger decals, I'll actually use a plastic squeegee. And then I just work out all the moisture. And as you work that moisture out, then the decal is gonna stick. And I try and roll this like that so you can get on the edge of that decal and kind of hold it in place. Callie does such a nice job with all this stuff. And you think it takes patience to build this stuff. I can't imagine the patience it takes to design and lay out, and cut. All right. Now let's get the time lapsing. Hopefully, maybe you can see this, but uh, I don't want crooked stickers. So what I am doing is trying to lay out a plot for exactly where to put this big gators sticker. So as I run this down the back and over the tail, I don't want it this way or this way. So I've leveled off the plane on my stand using the yellow level, as you see there. And now I also have a laser. So what I'm gonna do is use the bottom edge of the canopy opening, and I'm gonna straight line that all the way back to see exactly what straight looks like. And then I'm gonna uh, tape it off with a piece of tape. So from the edge of that canopy, all the way back to um, that light assembly all the way in the tail, is what's level so um we're gonna go ahead and use that for reference i'm gonna run a tape line right down there and that will be that and that'll be my marker for both sides
So check this out. There is the aluminum ducting tape, HVAC tape. Um, everything is done on this wing except for having the motor attached and I'm just waiting for the clear to dry on the motor assemblies but that is literally the best I've ever gotten this tape to um, lay in there and it's just been a work in, in progress if you will over many of these builds that I've done is trying to make each one better and this one is as close to perfect as I've gotten. It's just a labor of love, and there's a couple tricks um, along the way. So we got all of our linkage installed. We got our little gator fans parking only in there, so that's kind of cool. Um, and we got our winglets installed. And here's a couple of the things to discuss. Number one, I mark centers. And usually on all the other surfaces, I use this seam right here for center. On here, it's not center. Uh, I use the lights for center. So the aluminum tape, I just put a little leading edge mark on there and line it up with the LEDs down at that end and that end. Make it a little longer so you can use your fingernail and crease this. And then you can trim it away with a knife. And literally just start working very, very slowly going down from the center to the outside edge a little bit at a time. That one there probably took an hour and a half just to lay that aluminum because once it's on there, guys, you get one shot. And if it ain't right and if it looks bad, you're kind of stuck. So um, when you're ready to lay it, a lot of soap and water there. And that will help prevent it because the minute it sticks to this, it's going to peel the, the paint up. And I don't care if you put that stuff on there with a nuclear warhead that aluminum HVAC tape will rip it right off. So you have to really lube that thing up and be patient and slow and know you don't get a second shot at it. All right, guys, and there you have it. Uh, that wraps up this Florida Gators schemed AL37. Graphics are provided on this thing by Cali Graphics. You can check her out at www.calligraphics.com. So that's C-A-L-L-I-E graphics, G-R-A-P-H-I-C-S. Link down in the dot com, link down in the description below. So uh, she is the go-to source for everything graphics to customize your planes. If you don't see what you want on her website, simply email her with pictures and she will create the stuff and does a fantastic, fantastic job with that stuff. So with that being said, I'm really happy with the way this thing turned out for a custom idea and scheme. This plane is actually going to uh, Colorado. So I finished this thing up and we'll be sending it out that direction. I worked with this owner uh, numerous times to get things the way that we could both be happy with the uh, end product 
and I can still box it up and transport it back. So some of the things we did, we removed all the seams along the top and the bottom. Obviously everything is to uh, the best that we can. So this plane still needs to get split there and put back in the box. That's why we didn't do anything with that one. Um, we got the swirls for sure inside the nacelles. No way you can get around that. And then if you look back here, check that out on the gear doors. Hopefully you could see that here in the old camera. Give you a good view of that. Gators uh, fans parking only, which is pretty cool. We did all the aluminum trim tape, customized the laces. We fixed from uh, the factory. One of the hinge horns was pulled out of the foam, so that was repaired. Um, we added in a cockpit light, a green cockpit light. And as you scan over here, you get to see the alligator pilot. He'll show up better at nighttime, so we'll get a view of that. Of course, we did swirls in there, as I said. And as we come around the backside, we did the custom tail lights in there for the vertical stab trim there. Again, this plane was sanded all down to remove all the divots. Uh, several coats of primer, sanded, polycrylic to seal it, and then uh, painted. So there's actually four uh, cans of orange customized um, paint link down in the description below where to actually get very specific customized paint for blue and orange and then I hope I could flip this it'll probably just be easier to flip it over I want to show you guys some things that I did to the bottom of it but we'll do that just as soon as we get it back in and here you guys can see the bottom so we just customized a couple of the doodads underneath there and painted those a different color again everything is polycrylic this has about eight coats of spray and wipe on poly all the way across but also we customized wing bolts for them and the point of customizing the wing bolts there is so that way you're not putting them screws in and out and jabbing the foam with screwdrivers everything's taken in and out by hand um, painted up the wheel wells and on the inside of the wing and during the build video you can go back if you need to but we also pulled out the circuit boards in there and we sealed off everything so that way um, none of those wires could possibly come apart on the inside so um, quite a lot of little tidbits of customization that will overall make the plane much better but again super stoked with the way this thing turned out but anyway uh, very cool project this one took a while so we tried to be as meticulous as we can on this one. Each one I think turns out better and better that we do. This is number four that I've done now. Um, we have at least five coming up. So that project's going to be there for you guys to check out. So here we are, ready to be boxed up. We have styrofoam separators. We have ends wrapped in protective material. We have everything then wrapped in plastic and separated. And then in the bottom layer, we have not only the protective foam on the winglets, we got our carbon rods in there. Um, but everything is all wrapped, protected, and separated. our decals right on the top. We got some little hiding alligators in there. We'll throw some stickers in there too. share subscribe all that cool shameless plug stuff um, with that being said it's always appreciated that you guys hang out and watch my videos um, 
again, I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.